Earth Day was a few days ago and going green to help the Earth has a lot to do with science. Justin Grubb and Jeff Stevenson are here from the Imagination Station with some wet friends and it is Green Science Week at the Imagination Station. Jeff, we'll get to you in a minute about that. Okay, that's fine, in, Chris. Unless, unless you need to start to set the stage. No, no, no. I think I, I have Justin Grubb here. He's from uh, BGSU Marine Biology Department and he is going to talk to us a little bit about some marine critters that we brought in. So I'll let him kind of take over for a little bit. All right, Justin, Absolutely. what do we have here? Well, we have a bunch of animals in the marine lab, but I brought a couple of the friends along for this uh, segment. But one of the first animals I want to show you is the sea urchin, and this animal is really cool. It belongs to the group Echinoderms. If you hold your hand out like this, I could place it in your hand. But it belongs to the group Echinoderm because Echino means spiny and derm means skin, so spiny skin. But you can feel how the spines are moving around a little it's, bit. It's, it's prickly and it's moving, yes. Yeah, they use those spines for defense, but they also have tube feet along their, uh, it's called a test, that calcium skeleton that they have. Those tube feet actually allow the thing to grab onto rocks and shells and act, act as like camouflage for the okay. animal to keep it in the rocks. Will it move slowly? It does, it, yeah. Will it use those spines to kind of creep along rocks or the, the, the bottom of the, the water? <laughs> yeah, the ocean floor. Ocean floor, I was trying to get there, yeah. Yeah, the ampullae or the tube feet are actually what kind of propels it along huh. the floor, but they'll also use those spines to kind of help walk it. There are sea urchins that have much longer spines that they'll sit on those spines and use those to move around. Very cool. You can hold the sea urchin Ooh, if you want. Okay, I'll, I'll keep this guy over here. <laughs> keep him on a leash. Oh, Don't he, let him go he far. He is moving. I the, can, I can... the next animal that I want to show you is our starfish, and these are chocolate chip sea stars. Ch chocolate chip? Chocolate mm -hmm. chip. They get their name because they have these little chocolate chip horns on them that they use for defense. And now that I got them on your hand, I'll tell you that they eject their stomachs out of their body <laughs> in order to digest food outside of their body and then suck it back in. So if you let them sit there long enough, they might uh, eject their stomachs out on you. What'd they have for breakfast? Uh, muscles. I don't want to know. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll leave it at that. But when they eject their stomach out, they release the enzymes that digest the food outside of the body, and then they pull those enzymes and they digest the food. Chocolate in. chip starfish, and you said that that's their defense mechanism. On top, how how does that help defend them? Well, it provides extra like structure on top. So if a predator was trying to get to their skeleton, this is just another thing that they have to get through in order to get to the starfish. Okay, before they lose their breakfast, can we put them away? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You want to hold the starfish? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll hold. Trade, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you trade? Next me? up, we have a horseshoe crab, and the cool thing about the horseshoe crab is they are not actually crabs. They are related to spiders Whoa. and scorpions. If you hold your hand out like that, I'll place it right in your hand. The tail won't hurt you. They just use that to flip themselves over. But what these guys do is they are um, they eat all kinds of detritus. They'll eat worms and things on the ocean floor. And they are actually one of the oldest unchanged animals in the world. They have gone unchanged for 400 million years. Really? And their closest really living relative is the trilobite. And the trilobite, as you know, is our state fossil. So it's possible that 400 million years ago, people viewing this at home could have had a horseshoe crab travel around in their backyard at some point. You've legitimately creeped me out a little bit <laughs> yeah. this morning with this guy. What's going on here? Are those like his gills? Is yeah. he trying to breathe there? These are called book gills, and what they can do is they can flap them to help them swim, but they okay. also resemble pages of a book. So they have multiple pages of gills here. Oh, he's and, getting angry at you yeah. poking around in there. They also, I guess if someone was in my undercarriage, I'd be pretty upset right yeah, now, Yeah, poking too. at your gills. Yeah. <laughs> but they also use these gills to help swim. And when they swim, they'll swim upside down just like this. And they'll fan those gills, and it helps propel them. Another really cool thing about them is this is the mouth right in the middle. And it kind of looks like... That looks like something from, like, Predator or Aliens. Yeah, I always say it looks like the Sarlacc pit from Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But what they do is they work food down these tiny structures here okay. and it starts p tearing it apart with these pinchers here and that's how they eat so it's really cool. I'd be a little concerned about my fingers there but you looked like you knew what you were doing. They got to chew on your finger in order <laughs> to get anything going. <laughs> All right Jeff tie this into what you guys okay, are doing okay. at the Imagination so, so Station. We're doing Green Science Week so this is just one of the organizations that's coming down this Saturday. There's also it's a little botanical gardens they're gonna be okay. bringing composting with worms teaching about how worms are an important part of our environment so if you think this is creepy we also got some more wiggly <laughs> things that are gonna be coming and uh, also University Church is bringing a whole barrel ponics system um, where you can kind of learn about reduce, reuse, recycle, okay. how the things we do in our everyday life, we, we consider ourselves landlocked here, but um, we do, uh, the, you know, the trash we throw away does affect the oceans, right? Sure. Everything kind of does get back into the oceans and affects these critters. So you can come this weekend and learn all about like uh, how being green can help protect uh, all kinds of critters. Green Science Week at the Imagination Station this weekend. Yeah. All right, Jeff and Justin, thank you guys so much. I'll give you your friend back. Yeah, thank you. All right, yeah.
Please. All right, time now to head downtown Toledo. Take it a little history.